Hey, it's Danielle here, and in this video, I will be going over the new additions for the FCP Sniper 2.0 update. Right now on the screen, I have um, EU on the one hour, and this is actually the older version of the FCP Sniper. So just wanted to show you what the older version looked like, and that way you can compare it to the updates and that way you can see the difference so I know with this version um, a lot of people had you know great results but I also know that for a lot of people that are not familiar with the TDI um, the Doppler indicator down here which is a tweaked version of the TDI a lot of people had trouble actually reading that and understanding it because, I don't know, for some reason a lot of people think the TDI is very complex. So there's a lot going on and things like that. So that was um, one of the reasons I wanted to find something that was a little more easier to read. I guess I can say it that way. And also, I had several people asking me if there were alerts for this indicator that will alert when you know price got above 80 or 90 which is you know the smart sell level or the kill zone and as you know if you already have a copy of this system then you know that the Doppler does not come with any alerts like that but the update there's just some minor changes um, for the most part the system is still the same so the criteria and what you're looking for is going to be the same so you're still looking for price to be at some type of support or resistance and then you want to obviously confirm it with um, like in the older version you would use the moving averages to help you confirm whether you were in a bearish or bullish trend and you would come down here and confirm you know your entries with um, the Doppler indicator so this is the old version and we'll just hop over to I have another um, EU chart opened up on the same time frame so this is the update and pretty much like I was saying it's it's the same system you still have your support and resistance that's being plotted so the new changes would be instead of the old um, auto S and R indicator um, I've added the bank levels which you know will help you follow the smart money as they call it so you know you want to try to trade in line with the banks know when the bank has entered the market and things like that so these levels are going to help you with that um, they don't plot well I don't know I guess with the old SNR indicator support and resistant indicator there were sometimes there'd be a lot of lines plotted with this indicator it's only going to plot those key levels so it's going to help keep the chart a little bit cleaner not as many lines but you will have the bank levels which are the most important ones anyway right and then we have you know this sniper trend indicator which is also going to help you confirm the trend and also um, trend reversals is very similar to the SAR indicator for those of you that don't know what SAR stands for the stop and reverse so instead of the moving averages you can use this indicator here it's going to be green for bullish and of course red for bearish trends and you can go into settings and use whatever colors you like um, those are just the colors that I tend to use and another addition would be instead of the Doppler we have the RSX indicator 
Um, this does come with alerts. And I think there's different alerts. I'm not sure. Um, but the main ones that I pay attention to are the overbought and oversold alerts. So it will alert you according to whatever you set it to. So like right now I have my overbought and oversold set to 80 and 20. Now I know a lot a lot of people like using 70 and 30. Some people like using 68 and 32. So you can go into settings and set that to whatever you like. Um, but yeah, I like to do 80 and 20. So anytime price reaches goes above 80 it's going to send me a, an alert that it's overbought anytime it goes below 20 it's going to send me an alert letting me know that it's oversold and the other addition is going to be um, this volume indicator I know a lot of you may already be familiar with this one the WADA whatever explosion I'm not going to even try to <laughs> pronounce it, but basically it's a volume indicator. Um, it's a really, really good confirmation that will help you with your entries. Um, I like it a lot. It's very uh, powerful if you combine it with the right, the right um, things, I should say. But anyway... So those are the new additions to the FCP Sniper 2.0 update. And like I said, it's the same as the older version. You're still looking for the same criteria. You want price to be at some type of support and resistance level. So you you'll in this case you'll be using the bank levels, you know. You're looking for price to be at one of these levels. And it'll plot the daily, the monthly, and the weekly. That's it. It's not going to give you the, the H4, the H1, the M30, and the M15, like the older version. It's only going to do those higher time frames. Because when you think about it, you know, those are the time frames that the, the big boys, the banks, the you know, the institutions, those are the time frames that they use. So it's only going to plot from the daily and above now the daily of course those are good levels but for me the the more important ones to pay attention to are actually the weekly high and the weekly low because once price hit those levels um, you usually can catch a really big move off the weekly high and the weekly low that's usually when you know, big reversals happen. Um, as you can see here on EU on the one hour, you know, you got this um, high test candle or pin high or whatever you want to call it. You know, so it wicked this weekly high and then, you know, it just tanked. And then once it got to the weekly low, it reversed back to the upside. So, that's just something that you might want to keep a eye on those weekly and um, yeah, the weekly high and the weekly lows. It will give you the price for those levels. So if you're the type of person that likes to um, set price alerts, you can use those levels that they give you like right here. You know, this was this was a perfect setup right here because you have this morning star right here at the weekly low. You already have your trend confirmation that it turned green here. Then you know that it reversed and it was about to go bullish. And not only that, you come down here and if you look at the RSX, it's extremely oversold. It's like below our um, kill zone. So extremely oversold. And the only thing 
that you needed to confirm this. I mean, those two right there is, that's enough um, confirmation to give you a good idea that it was going to reverse. But the only other thing you were looking, you would be looking for would be, you know, the um, bullish volume, which didn't come in until later. So it just depends on how aggressive you want to be. And I'm going to go over um, the volume indicator and the RSX in a few minutes. But as far as, you know, the sniper trend indicator, pretty much the same as the moving averages. It's going to turn green for bullish, red for bearish. You can, like I said, it's, it's great for scalping. Um, like right here, you have your FCP sniper entry signal. You got the confirmation that's turning red, letting you know it's about to go bearish. And then down here, this is what you're looking for on the volume indicator. You want a, you want to see a big spike up above this yellow line. So, of course, if you're looking, if it's saying it's bearish, you want to see the red lines just spike up above the yellow line. And if you're looking to buy, like in this situation right here if you're looking to buy come down here oversold and you're looking for the bullish volume so it came a little bit later you already got the reversal um the sun reversal sign here and the thing the thing about the volume indicator i'll just point out real quick is that um Sometimes, like I said, if you want to be safe, you're looking for a spike above this yellow line. But if you are like the more aggressive um, trader and you like the aggressive entries, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So you got to know what you're doing if you want to use it this way. You can actually wait for this bearish volume to drop back below the yellow line. So as you can see, the bears were totally in control here, still above the yellow line. But once it dropped back below, it almost went back to zero. I mean, it got real low. This is the aggressive entry right here. It would have gave you the entry right at the sun, which is the reversal sign. So. Again, it just depends on your risk appetite and how aggressive you want to be. So I think that is pretty self-explanatory um, as far as the sniper trend indicator. Again, very similar to the SAR. You got the little dots. It's going to flip to red when it's bearish or it's going to reverse. And it'll flip to green when it's going bullish. Now, as far as the RSX, to me, this is very similar to, let's put it back on the one hour. To me, this is very similar to um, the TDI, but it's more straightforward. Like the TDI, you got the volatility bands and, you know, all this other stuff going on. But with the RSX, it's pretty much the RSI and I would consider this yellow line to be exactly like the yellow line on the TDI, the market baseline. So we'll call this the market baseline. And anytime price is trading above this yellow line, it's going to be bullish. When it's trading below it, it's going to be bearish. So that's um, pretty self-explanatory and right now I have mine set to 10 it's like just using the 10 RSI you can go in settings and you can change that to whatever you want it to be some people like using the 14 some people like using the 7 some the 21 whatever it is whatever RSI level that you like to use um, you can set it 
you can change that in the settings. But to me, the 10 is one that really, um, I don't know, it plays pretty good. It plays out with price pretty well, I should say. Um, I've tried the 14. I didn't really like it. So I'd rather stick with the 7 or the 10. But again, set it to whatever you like and whatever RSI level you are used to. So there's a couple of different things here. So we have the... Um, and you can set the colors to whatever you like. I like using the blue and the red. You can set it to green and red, white and whatever, yellow, orange, purple, whatever you like. But it's another confirmation because it actually, the price line actually changes colors. So when it's over sold, like here, it's going to be red, but once it turns blue, that's another confirmation that the trend may be reversing. Now, you have to keep in mind, just because it turns blue doesn't mean, okay, it's going to reverse. And I'm going to explain that um, here in a few seconds. But that's pretty straightforward. So once it goes red, you're selling. Once it turns blue, you're buying. But you have to be aware of where price is according to your yellow market baseline and I think this is a this is where a lot of people go wrong with the TDI they looking at the RSI crossing the signal line and that's buy or sell but a lot of people they just totally forget about the yellow market baseline and that's like a big key to the puzzle so Again, remember when it's below, bearish. When it's above, it's bullish. And I'm trying to find an example of... Okay, so this is a good example here. And just like you may have heard me say this before with the TDI, if you can find entries where price is really close to that yellow line, those are going to be your sniper entries. Those are going to be the entries that will give you the lowest drawdown. And majority of the time is going to give you zero drawdown. So I'll show you some examples in a few minutes. But I wanted to point out something. Like this is an example right here. So that's why it's going to be important that you have all your confirmations. Um, because if you're just looking at this. And you're going off of this and you're you're looking like okay this is oversold it turned blue it crossed above the 20 so you're thinking okay this is the time to buy well that alone is not enough confirmation or you don't have enough confluences to enter this trade right here for a buy one is because you're below the yellow market baseline and if you go down here and you look at the volume indicator you can see that I mean the bears there's just bearish volume so the bulls aren't even nowhere to be found when you look at the volume indicator so this would actually be um, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it false buy signal it's just not enough confirmation to me this is telling me that oh price is pulling back but that's not telling me to buy because like i said the volume indicator is letting you know that the bears are still in control right here and another thing i want to point out about the rsx indicator is that you'll see this yellow line turn blue and you'll see it turn red. So when it turns blue, do not think that means enter for a buy. And when it turns red, do not mistake that as an entry signal for a sale. Because what happens to me, those are just like warnings. And this is a good example right here. So it turned blue. And you looking down here and you're like, yep, it turned blue. 
it was oversold it turned blue is crossing up above the 20 but if you come up here you can see you're still it's still in a downtrend so you shouldn't even be trying to buy that and then again on your volume indicator it's just all bears there's no bulls in sight so you have to be very cautious you know just think of those as like a heads up or warning sign this is another example like when it first turned red if you line it up so you got your first red square price was actually still in the uptrend because you know this is still green so it's still in the uptrend it's still above the market baseline this yellow line so you're still kind of like uptrend but is but it is showing what overbought because price is above the 80 it turned red so it's letting you know that okay get ready to sell so this this turn red is it's a warning okay there's a selling opportunity coming up this doesn't mean that you enter right away for the sale and this is actually a good example because I think once it turns back yellow that may be the a better time to enter if you have other confirmations for it so like right here this had already turned red this turned red it turned back yellow here and if you come down here and line this up where it turned red you will see on the volume indicator down here what happened all of the bullish volume it dropped almost went down to zero right here so this would be your entry that's remember that's the aggressive entry or if you're more conservative you can wait for the bearish volume to spike up above the yellow line and that's that is pretty much it um like i said it's the same criteria you're looking for the same same thing you just don't have the moving averages and if you want to keep the moving averages you can keep them on your chart and use them with the rsx and the volume indicator it's totally up to you do whatever you know works for you but you have the different options to choose from and let's see so this is another thing let's see that I wanted to point out too again this is a good example this is on the four hour we're still on EU yep we're still on EU this is another example remember I'm telling you the weekly lows the monthly low even better they're gonna give you those clean reversals look at this it came up wick the um this is the weekly high and sometimes the weekly high and the monthly high will be the same so you know it hit that it reversed it hit the weekly low it reversed back up and we're back at the weekly high so again pay close attention to those weekly highs and low and also the monthly sometimes you can catch some good moves off the daily highs but to me the best ones are those weekly levels and one more thing i wanted to point out about the rsx so again this is a a very good example of a good buy signal so it's turned blue here to give you the warning like okay there's a buying opportunity coming up it was oversold because it was below the 20 so it's gonna give you a little pop-up and say oversold or whatever the alert says it started trading I mean it started crossing back above the 20 but right here and this is 
you know, it also helps like with something like this, you know, this, the bears are still in control. So depending on how aggressive you are, I mean, you can enter there if you want to, because you're at the weekly low. You just have to kind of know, this is when knowing some candlestick patterns will also help and a little bit of price action. But if you're just going off the indicators and, you know, the confirmations that you get from, you know, the system, you would not enter here. It's blue, blue, blue. Remember I said you really don't want to enter when it's blue. Once it turns back yellow, that will give you a better entry. So if you line it up, it went yellow after this point. Come down here. It confirms that the bears have kind of run out of steam because the volume dropped back below this yellow line. And if you come up here, you can see the trend has already, you got the green line letting you know that it has already reversed. So those are just things that you have to be aware of. And like I was saying, if you can find entries where price is close to this yellow line, like right here, you come up here. You can enter zero drawdown. Also right here, you can start seeing the bullish volume. The bull starts coming in to play right here. And another example, I'll give you another example. This is a good example. A um, couple examples here of like some good sell signals. So you got here, you're at the what? Weekly high. You've already had um, the trend reversal confirmation here. The, with the, it started with it starts with the red line. Then you start getting the little dots there. You come down here. You see how close price is right here to this yellow line. It's going to be a clean drop. And then the third confirmation, you have your bearish volume there. So that was a good sell signal. Here's another one. You actually have the um, the trend. It changes. You got the red line. Then you get the red dots starting to form. Close to the yellow market baseline. Come down here. You got the bearish volume spiked up above the yellow. You can enter that. Zero drawdown. Right here, a good example of a good buy signal. One, you get it's rejected at the weekly low, the weekly and monthly, or is that the monthly? So, okay, so that's going to be the monthly low. That's even better. So it's rejected at the monthly low. Price is very, very close to this yellow line. Come down here on the volume indicator. You got the bullish volume spiked up above the yellow line you got the b super signal confirmation and you got the fcp sniper signal right there so those are some good confirmations so that you know it's reversing over 200 pips that's on the four hour and i know a lot of people want to know what's the best time frame to use it on um i really don't go lower than the m15 and really as far as entries and things like that i i like to use the one hour sometimes the m30 and it just depends on the setup sometimes the m15 but like i said if you like scalping um you can definitely use the m15 for scalping let me see. So, you know, you can catch those moves. You got the buy opportunity warning signal right here. It turned blue. It's oversold. You can actually get in right here. Why? Because you saw the bearish volume drop 
back below this yellow line and then to confirm it if you wanted to wait to be more conservative wait for that bullish volume to kick in everything should be blue or whatever your color is in this case is blue for me so blue here blue here green up here and that's pretty much it so again just you know i want to emphasize paying attention to those weekly high and weekly low levels and just make sure that you're keeping in mind that okay this even turned red so you might be thinking okay it's time to sell because this just turned red is overbought this is completely red so this is giving you a warning telling you that hey there's a selling opportunity that could be coming up doesn't mean you enter for the sale because when you come down here it's all blue the bulls are still in control even though right here the volume did drop back below the yellow line here and if you come up here you can see you got this huge bearish um, engulfing candle so this could be just a pullback you know um, you can see where price did break above this daily high you know you could get a pullback back down to test this level or you can see some consolidation and it could keep pushing up because you're still in a bullish market because price is trading above this yellow line and again these are good signals it's close to this yellow line it was re it bounced it pulled back and then bounced off the yellow line both of these would have given you some pretty sweet entries for the buy so right here if you draw a line there you see everything lines up perfect you got the volume at the bottom you got the rsi that was rejected off of the yellow baseline and it also turned blue here you got the green trend confirmation right there then you know that it is in a bullish trend and you got the volume so hopefully that makes sense i don't want to keep rambling but hopefully that gives you a good idea of what to look for like I said, it's the same criteria, just using some different indicators. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the Forecaster Pro chat group. Or you can send me a direct message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you are interested in the system, um, there will be a link below this video. So you can click that link, grab your copy. I'll get you in our chat group. Um, system also comes with lifetime signals. And for the new year, I'll be revamping the signals. So this one, yeah, I, I didn't really give a lot of um, scalping signals like I had been before because it requires me to be at my computer a lot scanning pairs and doing things like that so i don't know towards the end of the year it just it's just been busy so not a lot of scalping signals but they will definitely resume for the new year so again purchase the system go ahead and Click on the link below this video and I will see you in the next video.